Hi everyone, it's Angelina from Sparkling Vivo with another reading for you. And uh, this time it's a reading uh, on uh, whether it's healthy for you to be in touch with your ex or your twin flame ex or not. Uh, the reason uh, for me doing this reading is that uh, some people who are uh, twin flames who are in separation feel that they actually benefit from being in touch with their twin flame even though they're not together and uh, even though the other person might even be involved with someone else but they feel that when they are not in touch that they suffer more and uh, now of course that doesn't have to go for everyone uh, for some who uh, it might be too painful to be in touch it might be better to not be in touch and there might be all kinds of issues at play and you know so that's why I decided to do this this reading I have a lot of cards so I'm going to try to go through them uh, quite quick <laughs> I'm not sure if I will succeed because I uh, I always talk so much <laughs> Uh, okay, this is reading number one, this is reading number two. Um, there is no, uh, uh, it's not like one reading is, yes, it's good for you to be in touch, and no, it's not good for you to be in touch. It's not like that. You just choose, and then we'll see what comes up, uh, what messages Spirit has for you concerning being in touch or not. So, for the numbers one, I chose the card Silver. So if that appeals to you, you're one. And for the numbers two, I chose gold. I hope you can see it. I'm doing my best to not have a glare. Right, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to choose number one or number two. Right. If you haven't made a decision yet, then please pause the video. I'd like to start uh, to avoid having to do two recordings uh, for the numbers one. Uh, the question being, uh, well, advice about being in touch with your ex or twin flame ex. Uh, this is also uh, for men. So if there's any men watching, if I happen to say a female partner or whatever, then or, or male partner, then it's the other way around. <coughs> uh, advice on being in touch. Uh, then we have codependency from the Romance Angels and the uh, Pentacles 4. Also, I forgot to say that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm using the Tarot of Sexual Magic. If, that, if you find that offensive, then please switch off the video. Alright, and I'm going to continue. Um, codependency and Pentacles 4. This makes me, well, this is clear, right? Codependency, then um, you are probably uh, codependent, which is not healthy, also not a healthy reason to want to be in touch with someone. Um, and the Pentacles 4, the, the lady, the way she is laying there, and the man on his knees, it's like she's well, sort of wanting him, needing him to please her, to do it what she wants, and to do it her way in in that sense, right? This is not literally. That's the don't take these images literally, but that tendency that um, she wants to lay back and have him please her, do what she wants, and um, in in a way she's in, she wants to be in control. She wants to have control. You know, not literally like bossing him around, but when you're codependent, you tend to not feel you're in control. When you are in, in control, you feel better, you feel stronger, you feel safer, you know what to expect, you know what's going to happen, because you're in control. And, um, well, if you're not together, or not together anymore, uh, then likely you have no control in the matter. And, yeah, you want that. That's that's what I feel. Um, the numbers, the question number two. Uh, what will contact uh, bring you or do for you if you were to be in touch with this person, with your ex or your twin flame ex? Then we have the Temperance, the Devil, and uh, the Knight of Swords. 
try to show them to you. I think that works. I hope. Uh, the temperance here, she, she, yeah, she doesn't look happy. She is um, focusing on pouring the, the the liquid from one flask into the other, and I feel that in this in this reading, um, she that's all she's doing. You know, once this flask is empty, she's emptied this one in that flask. She's going to empty that one back in in the other flask, and then you know she keeps doing that over and over. So she's stagnant, stuck, repeating the same thing, stuck in patterns, thought patterns maybe, uh, churning, you know, that kind of stuff. And she's stagnant, she's not going anywhere. She's not doing anything and she's not feeling happy either. The devil, well, exactly the same thing as codependency. The devil is all about that, being codependent. So, that's pretty clear. Uh, oops goes my little swan that was not the idea <laughs> and then we have the uh, knight of swords and well um, look who's in control here the woman is uh, powerless and um, yeah he has all the control and in a way she chose to be in that position because yeah, she's she's codependent, right? If uh, yeah, so you are codependent. If you, even if you're a, a a man watching this and and you're in this position as well, then you are then she's in control, and then you are codependent. So that's what uh, being in touch will bring you. It it will it will keep you stuck. It will keep you in in these limiting thoughts, beliefs, soul patterns, churning codependent and uh, out of control you will not have control because you gave that to him you gave your power away so it doesn't do you much good this is not really appealing is it it's not a position you want to be in uh, what will it do how will it be uh, when you are not in touch what will that bring you then we have the lovers the eight of chalices and the world um, let me see. I think that's it. I think. Um, I feel rejection here with these two first two cards. Like there's this temptress. There's this uh, other woman. She's naked, so she's revealed herself to the man. Uh, but it looks like he. Well, she doesn't feel too happy, and she's still looking at him like, "Oh, look at me! I'm gorgeous," and he seems to be falling for it. He doesn't know who to choose, and um, but it looks like he's going for that girl, and you feel left out. You feel rejected. You want him because you exposed yourself to him. You're naked. You know, you showed your real self self to him, and he's still not going for you. He's still doubting. He's still not sure. That hurts you. And here I see a similar thing, like things not working out in the Cups 8 card. There's these prickly thistles there in a vase, and he's trying to hold on to her. She's trying to move away from him because, well, she's not particularly pleased. Things weren't working out. I, I get a sense that there, um, yeah, you feel rejected. And then the world card, you want to be really seen, treasured, uh, cherished, really long for that, to expose yourself, to come home, and but, uh, yeah, there's also these, these rejection issues, and this is what you get if you are not in touch, so then you're also not uh, feeling all that happy, right, because uh, you still have to deal with the rejection you're feeling, not uh, you you'll probably think back on, on everything that happened and that didn't work out and you know but here you do have um, the option to heal here you can take back control here you don't have to be dependent right and, and when you are in touch you haven't got that power because you are codependent you're stagnant you're churning you're, you're you know and you you gave your power away
you give your power away. He has all the control. Maybe if you're in touch, then it would be like the other person is is uh, it, it's on his terms. Whenever it suits him, whenever he has time, whenever he feels like it, or whatever. You have no control here. Yet when you are not in touch, you have the option to heal. You have the power to take control over your own life. You're not, you know, to get over that the, the uh, codependency. <clears throat> so that would be better for you at this moment in time. That can change, right? When you heal, when you work on this codependency issue, etc., then that can change. This is now. Um, and the next card is uh, what is the true reason that you want to be in touch with your ex or your twin flame ex um, yeah again I see this oh, sorry we have the two of ones and the two of swords swords and two of ones um, I, th I think you want a chance to um, to talk to begin with and um, also, that, yeah, I, I kind of feel that you want to have that power again, that sense of power, of being in control and having control. Not being in control, um, but having control. That's different. There's a subtle difference to that. <laughs> having control in things. Like, he's reaching out here. You know, he's reaching out, he's making an effort. And she's turning her head away, like, no, I'm not going to have any of that. You know, you've got to make it up to me first. And, and you know, she's, she's, she wants to make him work for it. She wants to make him work for it. But deep down, that's, I, I feel that's just an, an, an act. Kind of like an act. Because she'd rather just run back in his arms and, and you know, because... She's still, you're still codependent. You haven't done the work yet at this moment in time. And if you do that, then you go back to this. Sure, you you're with him, but you have no power. You have no control. You have no say in things. It's all on his terms. So, but you do want that 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 sense of of having a say of uh, and you know you. I, th I think that's one of the reasons you want to be in touch. This, that's also what this card was saying, right? This sense of control, having a say in things, as opposed to it happening to you, having to let it happen to you. That doesn't sit well with anyone, right? And also to talk. You want to talk. You want to be close again. Right. Um, the next one is Spirit Advice. And then we have the, uh, from the Romance Angels, we have Soulmate, and we have Trust. And there is the, pent oh, sorry, the Ones Three, and Soulmate. Yeah, in the Romance Angels deck, there is no Twin Flame card, so I always take this to be the Twin Flame card. So I take this as a confirmation that he is indeed, he or she, the other person, uh, is indeed your Twin Flame. And you need to have trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. Now this is a reading about being in touch. So I think you just need to have trust and have faith. Also in yourself. Also believe in yourself. And work on that codependency if that resonates with you. Otherwise, yeah, then you might as well just switch off the, the, the clip. Because this is all about that apparently. But also um, believe in yourself. Inner strength and all that stuff. And that uh, comes up in this card too, I feel, because this to me always feels like being authentic, being true to yourself, being the real you, being true to yourself, and also having healthy boundaries, because if these people, they are fully dressed, they're not naked, not even uh, though this is the uh, uh, tarot of sexual magic. You know, many people are naked, half naked, whatever. But these are fully dressed. So it's not like uh, you're going to completely, when you see him, hear from him, or whatever, the other person, <coughs> you're going to um, completely expose yourself, surrender yourself, submit to him, and 
give in to their every whim again or you know that, that that's what spirit uh, spirit advises to not do that you need to have healthy boundaries so you don't end up in this situation again healthy boundaries believing in yourself inner strength and yeah it is your twin flame uh, the next, how does he feel when you contact him? He, that could be hypothetically speaking. Maybe you do contact him every now and then. I don't know, but it could also be hypothetically speaking. <coughs> I'm so sorry. But I felt it was interesting to look at that as well. Um, then we have the... Yeah, I'm not going to really name these cards, because I don't bounce off that anyway. Uh, over here... The, I'll just go through them one by one. The woman sitting there on her own, the man is coming in through the door or looking in. She's not really happy and he knows that you're hurting. He knows that you're miserable, that you're hurting still. And he doesn't really know what to do with that. And I think he also knows uh, that he is the cause of that. Of course, you always have responsibility in things going wrong too, right? But he feels at least that he is the cause of that and he knows that you're hurting and that doesn't sit well with him. That doesn't sit well with him. And he also knows, if you look at this, the woman is pregnant. So they created something beautiful together. You and the other person, you created something wonderful new life in that sense I, uh, some some people call that the third energy I believe the uh, between twin flames what's created the energy they create and he knows you created something wonderful even if you're not together anymore and um, but I'm again I'm trying to not have glare on the cards for you but I can't really see I think that's it um, he hasn't really this is knight of pentacles he hasn't really got anything to offer you at this moment in time he's offering the woman uh, a green lemon well what on earth can you do with a green lemon nothing much really so in this, he's willing you know he he he, he looks willing but he just hasn't got anything to offer you. He's trying, you know, he, he's come up with something. But is it, is it nice? I mean, it's, it's quite sour, isn't it? You're not going to sink your teeth into that and enjoy it. You know? So, yeah. It, it, he hasn't got anything to offer. And then here, this is King of Wands. Um... The man, the king, doesn't really look all that happy either. He's comforting her, but he doesn't look happy. He doesn't look happy at all. So in a way, he wants to be there for you. But he knows that he cannot offer you anything right now. And, um, you know, so in, in that sense, it doesn't make him feel all that good to be in touch because he knows he has nothing to offer and he knows you're hurting and that hurts him too. And... There's nothing much he can do in, in, at this moment. There's nothing much he can do. Not right now. So he, he, he doesn't feel nice, good either when you're in touch. He might even avoid it. Uh, and then that's because of that. And then the last one. What do you have to accept in this situation? Worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. I take that to mean that... Um, because this is about being in touch that at some point it will be possible <coughs> or helpful to be in touch with each other but you have to be patient this is not the right time just yet this came out reversed and it's a source 8 it makes me feel that um, she is uh, you whether you're male female doesn't matter uh, that you are here exposed dream in, on the uh, sofa and that you are daydreaming about your ex or your twin flame ex 
and you're fantasizing and spending a lot of time doing that thinking about you know him being with him or her if you are a man right but being with the other person and if you were together then how it used to be and you know you're spending a lot of time doing that daydreaming fantasizing and um here there is this nice message that comes with this card uh, without encounters with others you cannot find yourself we see this woman here in the water which is emotions and he's out of it he's on the grass on a horse he's fully dressed she's naked you this is you I feel are still in going through the motions of not being together, not being together anymore, not being in touch and uh, you might have a difficult time with that and then there, for some of you there could be another offer, another love interest um, for you and then if that's the case for you then you aren't sure what to do am I gonna, uh, gonna get up and expose myself or, and I'm, or am I gonna f sit here and feel embarrassed about being naked and being caught out and what am I to do that that sort of thing but since this what I just read out like and that is true without encounters with other people you cannot find yourself everyone brings something valuable to you and uh, so if there is another love offer and uh, then maybe you should go for that because no matter what it will always bring you beautiful things and you know, yeah, then, then they're there for a reason. Spirit didn't put them there right in front of you just like that. Then there's a reason for it. So if you do indeed have another love interest, then go for that. If that's not the case, then I feel it's time you stop daydreaming and fantasizing and start looking around what's really there in the real world. You know, and get out of that. Uh, 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 step out of these emotions and 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 yeah get a bit more realistic again and this uh yeah this actually makes me laugh <laughs> i'm sorry uh the queen of cups and um for this reading i feel that she is actually smothering him she's holding him, holding him the man against her boobs and i get the sense that he's like woman let me go I can cannot breathe you know give me some space to breathe it feels like she's very loving and caring and, and gentle and wonderful and enthusiastic and all that stuff but you know dim it a bit sometimes you know give someone some space to breathe and that might also go for the, being in touch with him maybe you've been uh phoning and texting and whatever and emailing trying to get a hold of him just give him some space to breathe and uh, even if you haven't done that you maybe you did that in the relationship or when you were in touch uh, or you have a tendency to do that in relationships with lovers then try to not do that anymore you know everyone needs a bit of personal space yeah it, it might <laughs> I mean look at that you know it might be funny. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm laughing about it because I think it's funny <laughs> how his face is just buried in her boobs. But you know, he, he might want to see something else occasionally too. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, um, I don't mean any disrespect, by the way, by laughing. But it, uh, yeah, I just feel it is slightly humorous <laughs> to suddenly feel that come up in a, with that card. I've never had that before. So all in all, um, summarize for you, it's better at the moment to not be in touch because that will keep you stagnant and more and, and codependent, stuck in your codependency and, and so it's best for you at the moment to leave it be, right? And it might change, but at the moment it's better to leave it be. I'm sorry, but yeah. I'm going to move on quickly to number two. <coughs> sorry, to... Uh, hopefully make it in one recording because that is the idea uh, make the effort uh, oh I have cut myself that is not really uh, one way or 
or another. Uh, that is for the uh, advice about being in touch with your twin flame. <coughs> Uh, make the effort. Uh, great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. And we have the uh, Knave of Pentacles. And um, I hope this gets clarified in the rest of the reading because this is confusing me at the moment. But it could indeed mean that you have to make the effort and, and get in touch. But we'll see what the, other, the rest of the cards say. Uh, but this, um, I hope you can see that, there we are I think, makes me feel that there is some sense of, um, well he's holding her, he's holding her and, and he's pouring the drink in her mouth and, and she's just letting him do that and you know it's running out of the corners of her mouth and there's another empty glass so there's probably already the second glass and I don't know, I, uh, it says a bit, a bit weird, it's like being forced to drink, it's like being forced to do something, let's see what the rest of the cards say, uh, what will contact do for you or bring you, uh, really? Uh, Ace of Swords, Pentacles 9, and uh, Justice card. I feel there is some, um, a bit of a power struggle going on. You know, like here, she's she's on top, he's, he's surrendering, allowing her to cuff him to the bed or whatever, and uh, trusting her completely because there's all these sharp objects here, right? There's an atami and a sword and the scissors and whatever. He's trusting her with that. And here it seems to be the other way around. He's cutting off a lock of her hair. She's allowing him to do that. She's completely surrendering. Her eyes are closed. He's on top of her. She, so it's like you're 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 having some sort of power struggle back and forth and back and forth and um, here the uh, the justice yeah they, they, she, this, this is balanced right she's, she's holding the scale she's supposed to be neutral right impartial justice um, unbiased but yeah she doesn't look all that serene to me at all more like I don't know what to do I'm not sure about this, and she's holding a sword right in front of her, almost as if she's looking in that direction, as it, almost as if she's shielding her heart chakra with that. It, uh, uh, yeah, balance <coughs> would be needed, but this seems to go back and forth. Very a um, uh, conflict-like energy, power struggles can also be passionate, of course, but ah, very much back and forth. It's it's not a peaceful, loving, peaceful, quiet, tender energy. So it might actually, if you are in, this was about what will it bring you to be in touch. It might bring you a lot of. Um, not necessarily stress, but um, yeah, maybe even anger. I don't know. I'm not knowing where you stand. It's going back and forth and back and forth. Him being in control, you being in control, you trusting, him trusting. And it it's not very peaceful. Not you know. Uh, what does it bring you to not be in touch? Then we have the star and the pentacles and the hierophant. And the star in this card, yeah, she's, she's again, I, I again get that feeling of, like here, he's just laying down and she's next to him and pouring this liquid all over him. He's allowing that to happen, he's accepting that. And then here you see her with her back 
turn to him and then he is trying to approach her to you know after something has happened probably sort things out I also again get that feeling of you know her being active trying to make up him trying to make up and doing something and it's it's a typical vibe but um what i what what does interest me is that there is this star that stands out and here is a star too don't know if you can see that i can't tell <laughs> there's a star here as well a guiding star a guiding star i will show you the way a, a more peaceful way where you can actually find each other as opposed to uh, him, her, him, her, you know, going back and forth. There is peace to be found, but neither of you are seeing it. Neither of you are seeing it. But there is an option if you are not in touch. There is more option, I suppose, to find that tranquility. Here again, the Hierophant is uh, two people, two women in front of the Hierophant well then you can also have this, this, this weird vibe of one being in control the other trying to appease him and ah uh, but this is also inner um, uh, getting in touch with your higher self I think that uh, what I feel is I get a sense that you are in touch possibly quite regularly and um, that could even be that you are not really phoning each other or texting each other but maybe you see each other regularly like for instance when you live in the same neighborhood and, and, and you come across each other in the supermarket or you work together and then you see each other uh, in the canteen or you know that sort of thing can also be in touch kind of and I think you need just need a break from that so this can stop that, that this can come to a halt there is too much um, pissed offness, so to speak. I'm sorry, I just can't find the right word. It seems to be this 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 this, this, this energy is still too strong, and not really in the right way. It's too much that that competition, conflict, pissed off kind of energy, and you can't get to this unbiased, neutral stance. You can't when you are in touch. I feel that you both need a break. So you can see that star, the guiding star, and then things can go either way. But then you can talk at least. Because then you both have calmed down a bit. I wonder if this resonates. Please let me know. Uh, what is the true reason <coughs> for you wanting uh, to be in touch with the other person? Um... You, the world oh sorry no it's not the world it's pentacles 10 and swords 7 and the tower reversed uh, yeah again that kind of weird feeling like um, when you look at it she's trying to make to, she's offering him grapes but I get a sense that she is trying to force him to accept them accepting her offer and it's almost like he's not sure he's not sure that he wants to have it's too forceful he's not choosing that himself he doesn't know sword 7 looks so similar to I, with this card, I always feel that, um, like he is quite desperate, not knowing what to do, really not knowing what to do, he's completely lost, 
backs turn to each other but I always feel for some reason or other that she is okay she's staring out of the window there's a horse there's these beautiful flowers you know and, and, and she's fine she's not bothered that that sort of thing so there is this this um, yeah I don't know. Then the the tower reversed. It also makes me feel that there's still anger. Is this is stuff um your comfort zone falling apart and um everything's tumbling down and I, 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 yeah I, Lost, feeling lost. And upsetness. It's just, yeah, but this was, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> this was about uh, what is the true reason you want to be in touch. Uh, yeah, again, that sense of control, wanting to be in control, seems to be so strong. I'm sorry, I can't make anything more out of this right now. Uh, oops, I messed up the cards here, I think. Um, I'm hang about. This is uh, Spirit's advice. It's a past life relationship. You have known each other before. So there could be issues from a past life that you still have to work on uh, that might actually have come up in this relationship now and there's too much um, this is very masculine energy this is the magician and this is the empress which is the basically the empowered feminine who can be soft yet strong and wise and smart attractive, alluring I get a sense that um, you're coming. You're coming on too strong, too masculine. You know, like this man, he, he, uh, he's, he's very much in a in 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 a hurry as well. You know, he's impatient. He, he doesn't. He looks a bit angry even. And usually, the magicians are smiling, happy men, but he looks just pissed off. And he's holding a sword and wands, and it's like. He's ready to to go to battle. <laughs> he doesn't even take time to get properly dressed. He's not even wearing shoes or socks or anything. You know, it's like he's very uh, ready for action, ready for battle, ready for another argument. Let that go. You know, if you're the the, the female, then and even if you're a man, you know, then don't do that either, because it's very harsh. It feels so harsh. You have to get a bit softer, a bit, you know, more from your heart, more emotional from the heart, and yeah, trusting as well that everything will work out. There's no need to have that to be in a hurry with anything. Take your time. Take a bit of time. You have to step back a bit. Redefine your boundaries and. Shield, right? It's a protection boundaries. I see that as healthy boundaries. Retreat for a bit and, and tap into your feelings. Let me see what I'm doing time wise. Uh, how does he feel when you contact him? Uh, he's guarded. This is death, but I don't really care about <laughs> the fact that it's death. I'm buying sort of the imagery, and there's this woman, and with that, uh, I suppose you also call that a scythe. And there's a couple there behind this woman who are in a lover's embrace. And I always feel that this this woman, death, is protecting that you can't get to them. So maybe the other person is in a relationship with someone else. I don't know. It doesn't matter either. He's not. He doesn't want you to see his inner world. He's guarded. You know. He's, he's shielding that off. And he will lash out if need be. 
if you try to get too close to him. It could also be figuratively, right? Of course. So, and um, on the other hand side, it, I get the impression that he wants to know, he wants to have a look inside your world, or your heart, or whatever, you know, your thoughts, your emotions. He wants to see what, what the hell you are doing. He doesn't want to show you what he's doing, but he's feeling what he's thinking. But he does want to know what's going on with you. Jealousy, I get jealousy. Yeah, I get jealousy with that. And then the last one, what do you have to accept in this situation? Uh, let's start here, calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations and visualizations help bring you together. And a deception, someone is wearing a false self-mask in this relationship. Uh, yeah, well that's pretty clear, someone is not really open. Uh, you know, it, actually they are both wearing masks. So neither of you is being completely open and showing your real authentic self. And that's because you are in this this kind of, well it's not tit for tat, but it's uh, him trusting, you trusting, you controlling, him controlling, that, that sort of thing going back and forth and back and forth. Then you are not really authentic because then you're not in your heart. So then you both are not really showing who you really are. That doesn't mean you're lying, right? But you're not showing your real authentic selves. And yet calling in your soulmate. You are soulmates. Twin flames. Likely. And also, uh, what do you have to accept? <coughs> yeah, he's not ready. He's not ready yet. Funny thing is, they, these look very similar, right? The fabric of her cape and he's the, the, the fabric here over his lap. It's the same stuff. It's the same. But uh, he's not doing anything. He's just sitting there with his phallic one staff in his hands staring at this 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 fountain of the woman the statue of the woman in the fountain and he's not doing anything he's just sitting there thinking wondering waiting yeah it, it, there's nothing much you can do about it he's not in, he, uh, empowered the other person is not empowered in his masculine energy yet he's not ready yet he's not empowered in his masculinity yet and you have to accept that because that's his process, you can't really do much about that. And also, for you, yourself, this man is on his knees offering her flowers, and she's sat there. There is this fountain here with all the hurts and pains from the past in it. There's a face in the water, there's a, a flame in it, so th that means the hurt is still burning, it's still hurting you. And he's offering you the flower, and she's reaching out, but it's difficult to tell if she's actually reaching out to accept the flowers, or to reject the flowers. So I take that to mean that you also have to work on yourself still, deal with the past, with whatever happened between you, or maybe in the past with other partners, so that you can accept it when he comes to you, when he's done with this process, and does have the guts to come to you to, you know, offer you love or to come, to get in touch with you or whatever, that you are willing to accept that without starting this fighting thing again, this fighting dynamic like you, me, you, me. You have to be in the heart, feminine, soft, like the Empress, and able to accept it and take off the mask both have taken off the masks here. Then you're vulnerable, might be scary. But you have to accept that that is going to take a bit of time. It will take time. Yeah. So, uh, is it better for you to be in touch together? No, it's best to leave it be, to give it a break for now, so you can both find the guiding light to heal and um, to come more into your heart space because if you are, if you do stay in touch or are in touch you, you're likely going to have that constant energy all the time 
Well, let me know if that resonated. I'm sorry I went through it so fast, but I'm. <laughs> it was a, a lot of cars, and I was running out of energy. Oh, sorry, energy. <laughs> running out of. Uh, the battery is about to die on me. Duh. And um, but it, please let me know if it resonated with you or not, which can happen because it's not a personal reading; it's for a general public, so that can happen. What I do find peculiar is that here is this masculine energy, right? This sort of conflict fighting energy. This this and gold is masculine. And here, this was more of a rejection of emotional feeling thing. And then we had the silver. And silver is feminine. And feminine is about emotions and, you know, good or bad. So funny that I chose these cards. <laughs> Intuitively. In any case, please leave me some feedback and uh, and likes if you did like it. and share it if you want to and I'll be back with you soon with another reading have a wonderful evening lots of love to you all bye